Welcome to the Lara Jane Layton Show. This podcast is for you, the person who keeps putting others first. Your self-talk has held you back. You no longer need to take a second seat. Let's explore ways to overcome self-doubt. You can silence that inner bully voice and achieve your full potential. Here's your host, Lara Jane. Hello, listener. It's your host, Lara Jane, and I am so excited. I am here with a new best friend. Her name is Carolyn. Carolyn's an author, and we're going to hear about her book towards the end of the recording, but we are going to focus our conversation today on how choices can change lives. And I love, I love this topic. I know I, you probably (laughs) heard it more than once, but it is something that I think is so important. And the more ways we can share this message, I think it's going to get through to more and more people. So let's keep sharing the message. Carolyn, take it. Oh, wait. All of the information about Carolyn's in the show notes already for you right now. Link to her book, link to her bio, everything about her and ways to contact her. So Carolyn, let's talk about choices. Laura Jane, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here and uh, it's a real privilege to be able to chat with you and and talk with you on this subject. (laughs) Yes, it's it's so... um, up front and, and in today's world, isn't it? We're living in a world that is constantly changing and it's hard. Let's face it. It's really hard to navigate. And um, what I've experienced and the tools that I use um, really help navigate how to cope with change. And um, I've got a little story, a personal story of how um, choices change lives and how my choices changed my life over a situation, a very simple situation, which um, I think you'll perhaps be able to relate to as well. <laughs> I, I'm sure I will be able to. I'm so excited to hear this story. Okay. So, um, yes, you can tell I'm not from America. I'm a New Zealand girl, born and bred. Um, I've traveled the globe and I was a travel agent, but this story starts, um, in Australia. I've got five children now. I've been living there for about six or seven years and I, uh, my family and I would go back to New Zealand. Oh, and did I tell you I was a travel agent? Yes. <laughs> well, you did. Yes. Okay. So um, I really do know how to pack light, and and I tell uh, my my customers back in the day when I was an agent, I said, "Look, you've really got to travel light, people, because it's it's so costly otherwise, (laughs) and it just weighs you down." Um, So interesting. The story. We're heading back to New Zealand for Christmas, and we're so excited. We love New Zealand. We love our family. But here's the kicker. I had actually pre-packed my bag in my head. I was actually full of anxiety and fear for my trip because what had happened um, over the years was I would go home and there would be a certain person that every visit I felt under attack and I'd be criticised publicly in front of the family, uh, my husband would not respond to that. He wouldn't back me. And I had pre-packed my bags already and it was horrible. I, uh, my head was swirling with all these thoughts of what was going to happen, um, how the conversations were going to be. And I was just full of anxiety, to be honest. And I'd be lying in bed and I couldn't sleep and I'd look at the ceiling. I'd be going, and, you know, these conversations, this mono conversation, I I hadn't shared it with anybody. And um, it really, it started to really weigh me down as excess luggage does. And it was just awful. And then I'm very grateful for the fact that I was in a really great community and I decided, you know what, I'm not doing this. This I'm exhausted. 
I'm cranky. I'm not being a good mum. I'm being a lousy wife because in my head, I'm angry at my husband. He hasn't actually done anything yet at this point. (laughs) And so I thought, you know what? I need to go and share this. I need to go to somebody I trust and I need to share my issues. And so we used to go um, to a Friday faith lift, it was called. Good play on words. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I went and saw my pastor. And um, that was the first step I didn't even realize. The first step is to choose to actually share what's troubling you. And I didn't realize that impact of doing that. I felt already like my the load had been lifted because I'd shared a little bit with him. I was still in fear and, and still anxious and probably still a bit angry. Um, and so as we chatted and we talked together, he started, as he called it, started flying kites. He, he would say, oh, what happens here? And then what happens there? And then how do you feel when this happens? So this was the second thing that I learned. I started to refocus. Instead of just thinking about me, he took the focus off me and he actually had me refocus on what this anticipation was. But not only that, he took me back to reflect on what had happened in the past, so I could be honest about that, but actually then go, okay, so this has happened. What do you want? Oh, my gosh. That was like, huh. You know, he's just asking this honest question. And so then I had to honestly stop and think, well, what do I want? Well, Mm -hmm. actually, I, I want to be affirmed. I want to be told I'm a good mum and I'm doing, you know, I wanted affirmation. And so I'm like, interesting. Wow. You know, this was like, I was really unloading my excess luggage and I didn't even realise it. It was so amazing. And, And so as we started to unpack, what happened was he then had me refocus on the person that I felt under attack by. So now I'm thinking about them and now we're unpacking them. And it came to the point where he goes, so this was point number, I think, where are we up to? Um, I think number three. That I'm not sure. Having, <laughs> yes. Um, he had me refocus and he had me think about that person. And I call it the boomerang effect, which is kind of funny because I'm from down under. I'm not Australian, but we'll use the boomerang. Mm-hmm. What you give, you, you throw the boomerang out and it's so beautifully designed, it comes back to you. So what I realized and what he taught me was actually the person that was attacking me, his bucket was empty. No one affirmed him. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I then started feeling empathy for that person. Instead of being angry at them and and defensive, I started to think, oh, wow, oh, that's sad. Actually, now you mention it, no one's affirming them. And so I'm like, okay, I've got a choice here. You know what? When they ring or maybe I could ring them, I could choose to step out and ring them. And then I started filling their bucket. And I said, you know what? And I meant it. I was, I really genuinely meant it that I missed them. I valued them. I valued, um, their input in our lives. We love them so much and we couldn't wait to see them at Christmas. It's going to be awesome. And I filled their bucket. So then what happened was really amazing. Um, I think it was maybe less than four if we're up to it taught me humility. And that's a really, really, really hard coat to wear in today's society, to be humble. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really hard coat. And I think we're actually taught not to be. Uh, We are very trained not to be because you got to be good. You got to be better. You got to be better. And it's, you know, you're okay just like you are. Yes. And and you've got to go and, and get it, you know, and stomp all over everybody to get to get what you want whereas humility is the opposite actually again it's not about hashtag me it's about thinking less of yourself no but thinking of yourself not thinking less of yourself but thinking of yourself less 
<laughs> yes, I like that. Rick Warren, that's not my phrase. That's Rick Warren. He's amazing. He's got a great book, by the way, <laughs> A <laughs> Purpose Driven Life. Incredible. Anyway, so it, that was the humility. It was like, yes, stop thinking so much about myself and actually use this boomerang effect, fill somebody else's bucket. And guess what happened? It came back to me. It was incredible. It came back to me. And 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 when I went to New Zealand, it was almost like the first time this person didn't attack me. I was like, wow. It, it was just so amazing. And, and so then the next thing that I learned, I think it, we're up to about number five, was gratitude. I had gratitude. Gratitude for my family. Gratitude for that person, actually. Gratitude for their, for actually their love. I had believed the lie. Be careful what you believe. B-E-L-I-E. B-E. There could be a little hidden lie in what you believe. You need to sort it out, people. Question what you believe because it may not actually be true. And my belief that this person didn't value me, perhaps didn't even respect me, that actually wasn't actually true. And so it was incredible. And so this was three months out. Well, now a month and a half out, that big ugly monster in my head had gone. I had chosen to take these steps to unpack my excess luggage and now I was free it didn't have the control over me that it used to have and if you ask my husband I was happier (laughs) you ask my kids I wasn't this grumpy mother and I got my sleep back (laughs) you know uh, what you're talking about is what I call that bully voice that thing that replays in our head that could have maybe happened but our thoughts are so much more damaging than any of single experience. Maybe somebody told me I was ugly or I was a bad mom. That replays. It's the replaying of that and not realizing that, so what they Mm. think? Why does it even matter? And I started thinking that when it really hurts when someone says that, It's because we kind of think they might be telling the truth. We doubt ourselves. We wonder, hmm, and we start looking for proof one way or the other. Am I a good mom? Am I not a good mom? How does this go? And then if they were said, "Uh, Caroline, you have such ugly black hair. What would you think? Oh, my hair's not black. You're an idiot. You know, you wouldn't eat, you wouldn't think about it one more time because it would be over. You knew it was a lie. You knew it wasn't true. So it just goes away. But when we wonder, am I really not socially acceptable in the way I look? Does people really hate being around me because of something? Then it starts to hurt. And so when you can express it, we start unpacking why it is a lie. And once you realize the truth in it, then that sets you free. And so I love that you were able to express it, that you were able to learn that really the things that people throw at us are their stuff. It's (laughs) not our stuff. You know, it's not us. It's what they're feeling. And we've got to just let it go. And you did it. (laughs) It was so exciting. (laughs) And and I love the gratitude part because being grateful for everything is just where your heart just stays in that happy place. Yes. Yes. I think um, the thing is from what I, so my mother is a manic depressant. She's 87. And she can't get out of her head. As much as I've tried to help her and redirect her, she still hasn't been able to. So sometimes, though, as try as we might and as hard as we might, sometimes we still are stuck. And 
What I've learned actually through my Christian walk, actually, is that we aren't the source of our strength. We can use the, the strong parts of ourselves, you know, and and in gratitude see what is true and fill our minds with that. But sometimes it's still not enough. And then what happens? And so what I've learned for me, another tool that I've learned along the way, coming out of a horribly dysfunctional family, being rejected, seeing just so many things where I've been rejected over and over and over. The one thing that has been solid all through my life has been the love that Jesus has for me. And and that's, for me, undeniable. I have seen him turn up well, he's been there all the, all along anyway. Sometimes I've rejected him and when I've fully embraced and I've stopped and I've paused and I've really unpackaged, well, who am I actually? What am I doing here? It, I call it like going to um, basic instruction before leaving earth. That's the Bible and that's the manual <laughs> for living. <laughs> you know, you buy a car and you have a manual in the glove box. You buy a vacuum cleaner and in the box is the manual, the instruction on, you know, how to clean your mm-hmm. vacuum cleaner. Well, some of it's so obvious. You, you Half the time we don't even read the manual, right, because we think we know. And for me, my manual is the basic instruction before leaving earth. And for me, from the creator, the the answers are in there. And that has been my personal experience and journey. And every time I hit more turbulence, it's like, hang on a minute. It's like the eagle. He created an eagle. I learned this. It was incredible. The eagle is the only bird that's created that when there's a storm, it flies headstrong into the storm. It sticks its wings out and it uses the, the force of the storm and it just lifts itself. It's taken above the storm. And I love that image because sometimes we can't get out of our head. We can't get out of the storm. But when we go to a different level, a different perspective, wow, there's light. And, and I use this a lot. There's light out of the storm and and the and when we can get above the storm that's when we can truly see what's going on that's when we can sift through where is the truth is that true sometimes people do tell us the, the truth and it really hurts but sometimes we need to hear the truth so not everything that damages and hurts us is a lie we have to somehow sift through pause and think about it, Mm, well, maybe, yeah, well, maybe that is true. And maybe they've said it in love, but it's come out so in such a mean tone, (laughs) you know. Um, know, If people are resources, if you could get rid of one thing in the world, if you could get to just one, you know, people say hate, people say, you know, all these different things. Mine is expectation. Oh, really? If okay. you could just get rid of expectation, so what if that's the truth? Why are you expecting me to be different than I am? Okay. Why do we always have to be different? It, what what you may feel as an attack from a comment that was true is because you don't want to be that. But when we acknowledge who our authentic self is Mm -hmm. and realize this is me and this has brought me to where I am today, you and I were talking about we love our age, you know, we're both in our 60s, we're both, we love our age because there's wisdom and there's experiences and there's all these things and I wouldn't want to change that, but that expectation when we get upset at somebody, it's almost always because we expected something else. Right. And that's where it comes down to that choosing your response that we're going, yes. that we're talking about today. Yes. Yes. You know, is yes. how do we choose to respond, it's whether it's true or false? Yes. So we're, uh, going, yes. we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> 
And we're going to get a word from our sponsor. And when we come back, we're going to dive deeper into this choice and the response. And how can we rise above that turbulence? Because I love that analogy. So be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Lara Jane Coaching. You know you're ready to silence your inner bully voice. Let Lara Jane support you with coaching. To schedule an introduction call, go to larajanelayton.com. Welcome back. We're here. And you know, I, you were telling the story about the turbulence and the eagle, and I'm like just loving this story so much. And thinking about, you know, when you're in a place where there's so many negativity, we can rise above. You do not have to fly in that turbulence. It's okay to walk away. It's okay to choose your response. Yes. So let's talk about choosing our response and how that is going to help us set, I like to say, our souls free because our bodies are containing this amazing soul with all these shoulds and shouldn'ts and how we're supposed to act and what we think the media has told us we need to look like or act like. And you know what? We're authentic. We have a real self that doesn't have to be identified by an external source. It's ours. Mm -hmm. Help me choose my responses, Carolyn. Oh, that is so lovely because we are so uniquely made, which I love. We're not robots. And Creator God made us not to be robots. He gave us choice. But what I've learned is that choice is, one, very valuable but costly. It's really a, it's costly because... The, the cost of being free to choose has a responsibility. Oh, you have to accept your the, the response that comes back, but you are free to choose. But yes. the consequences are always there, whether yes. they're positive yes. or negative, but yes. it's your choice. Yes, and we have to today, and I don't know that we see it very often, be responsible for our own choices. There's so much blame in the world. And, you know, oh, well, it's, you know, it's my mother's fault she's an alcoholic or it's my father's fault he left me when I was a child. Oh, it's because of this. You know, we blame, blame, blame. Let's just blame everything and everybody. And and it's interesting when you point the finger, point the finger, how many are pointing right back at you? <laughs> exactly. So it's just about, for me, these dive, diving into realizing that a deep dive, actually, into our own responsibilities and no more blame. Because even if it's a ripple effect, that yes, there could be, and it's happened so often in my life, actually, where Things have happened to me and it wasn't my choice and it's impacted me and I've been the victim of somebody else's choice. But here's the kicker. I can then choose to stay victim or I can choose to use that to propel me forward. You can be the victor and you can rise above and yes. you can be successful. Yes. And who would we be? Without some struggles. I'm sorry. I know. Rosie yeah. life sounds amazing. Yes. No. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Is it Wally, that animated Disney movie where everybody was flying around in the carts and they had quit walking because this was just easier? And yeah. But they lost the ability to walk. Right. And they had to relearn and they had to redo. Without struggle, we become weak. Yes. And so you've got to embrace those triggers. I call them, you know, it's an external thing that comes to me, but I am 100% responsible for the response. Yes. Whether I want to hate it 
or I want to accept it and move beyond it. You can be the pilot and you can stay in the turbulence and you can crash and die with the the 100 passengers or you can take that aircraft out of the turbulence and keep on going. And it's what you focus on is what you get. And if you want to focus on the turbulence, you're going to stay in it. So we need to learn to change our altitude to support our free choices of who we are. Yes. Oh, I love that. I so love that. And so people have to, um, you know, you're talking about the pain. I see it like going to the gym, right? We may not have gone to the gym ever, or we may have, you know, slipped off the the wagon and, and, oh gosh, it's been two days or it's been (laughs) two months or two years or whatever. When you go back, and, and you start pushing those muscles again that you forgot you had, it hurts. <laughs> but that that resistance actually then makes you stronger. So, yes, to your point, how do we choose to respond? And the responses are so key, aren't they? I just I love the fact that you've honed in on that because that that's so powerful. And when when people can realize the power of their response then you're right. We go from victim to victor. And it, it's just, yeah, then you start to be set free. It's it's incredible. And you can live in hope, as my jumper says. I, I love <laughs> your hoodie. I love it. <laughs> um, it says rejoice in hope. Romans 12, 12? 12, 12. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, people and today, maybe they've lost sight that there is a hope. There, but there is. And if we just contaminate our minds with with the news that there isn't. The bully voice. The bully <laughs> voice. Or actually it could be of our own choice that we're choosing to listen to that tape or mm-hmm. we're choosing to watch that movie or we're choosing to listen to that channel. You right. know, we can. I call it being the air traffic controller. I love how about, that. How about we be responsible and send it away? Like, no, you're not landing here. You're not landing here. And you're certainly not landing in here. I'm sending you off. Or just change the channel. Or maybe just turn it all off. And to your point before, maybe get up and walk away. <laughs> I, I love this air traffic controller. This is like amazing. I have never put it in those terms in my head. But yeah, I get to tell you when you can take off. I get to tell you when you can land in my area. You're responsible for yours. I'm responsible for mine. And we choose the input. Yes. Like is it? We can be in a situation where it wasn't our choice. But how did we respond? Did we become stronger? Or did we let it crush us? Yes. Yes. We're all, yes. <laughs> I love this. This is great. Look. I know. It's so much fun to chat with such amazing women. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, even in our private lives, when we're so busy, we're so busy trying to juggle everything, you know, the corporate hat, the the home hat, the who am I hat, the and and maybe we need to choose to rewrite our own schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, for everything you pick up. I think it was Andy Stanley that I listened to. He said, or maybe Bob Goff, I love that guy. Check him out. He's this former lawyer. <laughs> he said, you know, for everything you take on in your life, you need to then let something go. Or otherwise, guess what? We're just going to keep filling up and then eventually, boom, we break down. Yeah, and I've also talked about it in the opposite also, where we talk about all the things we want to stop. And if you just stop doing something, you've left a void and you need to fill it with something else. And so, yes, if I'm going to bring something in, I need to make room for it. But if I'm going to get rid of something, 
make sure you know what you're filling it up with first. Because just getting rid of something can cause a lot of anxiety over, I don't know what to do now. Like, okay, pretend like just maybe you want to stop drinking coffee. Never going to happen on my end, but pretend like that's the case. (laughs) You need to replace that habit with something. Yes, true. Or you're going to, every time you have that, you're going to have a freeze. Um, So it's maybe I'll drink orange juice. Maybe I'll drink a glass of water. What is my response going to be? I got to choose it ahead of time when that thought for that coffee comes up. I had a guy that I worked with that stopped smoking. He didn't replace it with anything and he became hard to deal with because he didn't get those 10 minute breaks outside every few hours that he was so used to. You know, he needed to go on a walk that the process of what he was doing with that cigarette wasn't just smoking. And when he shut down the one habit, he shut down the things that kept him sane. Wow. And so it's like, where do we get rid of the things that we don't want and replace it with a habit where we don't suffer? So I'm just like on both sides. We yes. have a cup. We are a cup. We want to be full. You need to be full in order to share. And if you're letting out too much, or if you're trying to put more in, something's going to slip. And if you're adding something like you just talked about, choose what you're letting go of. Don't just let something overflow that you've thought, oh, what happened to my pretty smile today? Because it's gone because I put something else in its place because I didn't choose what to let go of. So back to that choosing our response. When we're adding, choose what to let go of. When you're letting go of, choose what to put back in because you are a full entity right now. And it's like finding that balance. Love it. That's great. Thank you. (laughs) Both sides. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, You know, it's, it's funny how fast time flies um, and how quick 30 minute chat can go. And it's just like, Oh my, we're out of time. And I love that. There's never that dull moment. I love that there's always more to say because it keeps us coming back. But I wanted to just touch on, you know, with our listener, the book that you have written, The Travel, Turbulence and Transformation. And usually I ask for the last minute wisdom. So would you just give us a quick overview of your book and who it's marketed to, who should be reading this book? Sure. Um, So my avatar is me 45 years ago. Um, It came out of the ashes of my brokenness, actually. It took six years to write. The first 60,000 words were, as writers call it, um, writer's vomit. (laughs) It was actually... I realize in reflection my healing process Mm -hmm. and this is what I want for my reader um, to walk through the healing process. And we, to your point, we need to identify, you know, our fullness and who we are. And for me, um, I like to take my my reader to a place of reflection to a place where they can respond to a place then of resilience uh, then to a place that takes them into that uh, reformation or reformed um, place in their in their heads in their heart you know we have our actions and our outcomes and it starts with a belief yeah. And what you believe about yourself, let's let's just focus on ourselves right now, what we believe, we then act, and then there's the outcome. If we want to change the outcomes, we need to revisit. And so I really like people to 
to actually reflect. I think reflection is a great place to start and that um, is a good place to know who we are and what shaped us. And that way you can actually rewrite your future because you use it as your rocket fuel to then move forward. And and that's my heart and and, um, purpose really, that as a travel agent, yes, I've traveled the globe 40 and counting countries. I've spent 25 years away from my homeland and that in itself has caused, you know, some conflict. Um, The world is changing. We have choices, but choices change lives. And so that's, that's the heart of it. Good and bad. (laughs) <laughs> everything Absolutely. we do there is a consequence or a reaction let's just talk you know let consequence kind of sounds negative because you can be a good choice and there is a reaction there you know so it's what is coming back to us and the better or the more thoughtful our choice yes then you know what's coming back because you've pre thought through it you figured it out so thank you carolyn so much for coming on the show today listener carolyn and i are not medical or mental professionals we are here for entertainment purposes the full disclosure is in the show notes along with all of the cool information about how to get a hold of carolyn now there was one thing that you asked if we could talk about. And I said, yes, and we forgot to talk about it. So let's <laughs> talk about your four day thing that you, it's in the planning stages. So it's not all there, but as soon as it is, you're going to send that link to the team and it's going to already be in the show notes when the te- when the people listen to this. So tell us just a little bit of a hook on this four day Sure. So uh, really, I've learned for myself that we can fill ourselves with head knowledge, but that's all that's where it stops. And and so really we need to start applying what we've heard and what um what we've learned. And so in the four-day challenge, um I, I I spoke of some of those R's, you know, to stop and reflect, um, to Um, refocus, to start building resilience, to then look at reformation and reform and moving forward. So basically, it will be a four-day workshop challenge. You spend an hour with us as we discuss what the homework we've done in the week, which is basically reading two or three chapters of my book. At the end of each chapter, there are reflection questions that are very poignant for you to then reassess, to reflect, and then make choices to move forward. And over the course of four weeks, we just come together for one hour with the purpose at the end to actually be in the space of transformation, to have the tools then to fly above the turbulence because it keeps coming at us. It just doesn't go away. This is life. And that's what the workshop will be about, tools to give you on how to cope with change, how to make good choices, how to um, refocus and how to be reformed and changed so that your life, as I say it, you will then – travel with hope, joy, and peace. Beautiful. You know, one of the things that you did mention, and I think I've got the name right, is Faces with Names, the organization where all the proceeds are going to go to. And so the show notes will also have the link to that um, organization. So, all right. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and listener, stay tuned for the next episode. Are you tired of waking up exhausted? You are not alone. If you're looking to take your life back, let's start with the simple step of adjusting your self-talk. Stay tuned for the next episode with your host, Laura Jane. Remember to follow the show so you don't miss a next simple step that you can use to feel more confident. And please leave an honest review.